made this cyanide laced purple Kool-Aid and forced them all to drink it. And there's, as people are dying left and right, uh, they have audio recording of the people screaming and he's shooting people. I mean, it, it's a massacre, is what it is. But uh, this man claimed to be God as well. Uh, what about the Pope? The Vicar of Christ, right? He claims to be Christ incarnate. Uh, what about Joseph Smith, who the Mormon Church teaches as part of the Trinity? You didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, the, the guy... Anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. So that's just a few, right? So Manson never got out of jail. You would think if God ever wanted to get out of jail, surely it'd be easy. Right. He created the doors that hold him in, you know? What about Kanye West? He's so badly in debt that he actually asked recently Mark Zuckerberg for a loan of millions of dollars. I mean, see, I thought God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I mean, man, this is a big problem if you're God. You know, you run out of money. Hmm. Jim Jones, he's dead, but not before killing all his followers. We talked about that. Every pope has died, and every pope will continue to die. That's the one thing that sets the pope aside from Jesus Christ. Jesus never died, amen? Well, he died, was buried, and what's his problem? He just has to, he just can't stay down in that grave. He just raises from the dead. Yeah. Now he's ever making intercession for me and you. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon, Mormon cult, he's also dead from a shootout with the police. Against a police officer that was a better shot than him. You know, you would think if you're God, you'd probably be a pretty good shot. Like every time you fire, you would you would get what you're firing at. You know, but the, the problem gets bigger because after supposedly ordaining the powers that be in Romans 13, you're killed by them. In Roman, it just doesn't make sense. So, but God has many ways of dealing with a false prophet and false teachers and what the Bible calls liars. He does. He does. Here's one. Look over in Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. What's God do with people like this? With the Illusions of grandeur. Acts chapter 12. Look over in verse 21. King Herod. There we go. Acts chapter 12, verse 21. It says, In a, upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon the throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. God has a way of dealing with these people, doesn't he? He's not going to let you get away with it. And uh, another one that just coming up to mind is Nebuchadnezzar as well, if you remember. Pretty similar situation, but God drove him out to the wilderness. And uh, his hair grew like the feathers of it, of like feathers. And he's sitting out there eating grass like an ox. The guy just got totally jacked. God just said, "You want to act stupid? I'll take your mind." There you go. And he's out there rolling around in the mud. He thinks he's an ox. I mean, this this is a a Babylonian king. You understand? Like you can find all this stuff in history. And it's if you would have just believed the Bible, it would have been there the whole time. So anyway, talking about Jesus says the God as God is equal with the Father. So think about this: if Jesus claiming to be God was was any different, why wouldn't God just kill him or, or take his mind or judge him somehow? Was he just a delusional man that thought he was God? Number one, God called his son God. Look at Hebrews chapter one and verse eight. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8. We'll hang it right. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8, the writer of Hebrews, which we believe is Paul, says this, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. And uh, that's actually... That's a quote from the Old Testament there. 
Isaiah 45, verse 6 and 7, but what type of father, think about this, would actually call his son God? You know, especially for a Semitic or an Asiatic household. To actually, I mean, that's kind of really going against the way they do everything. You know, I've met, I've met people locally here, and they're like, oh, what's your son's name? Oh, it's King. His name is King. It's like, you named him what? King? That little wicked sinner. <laughs> I seen him in Sunday school. You know, I mean, but so I'm not saying that nobody would be like this, but what type of father would actually call his son God? It's ridiculous. Yeah, there, there it is, Hebrews 1.8. In Psalm 2, verse 12, I'll read it. It says, Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and he perish from the way. Kiss the Son. See that? When his wrath is kindled but a little, it says. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That's back in Psalm 2. That's an Old Testament verse there. But the Jews, they also, like we talked about in John 5, they pointed out the implication of what Jesus was claiming. What was it? That he was God? Um, look at Matthew chapter 9. We'll, we'll give you a few examples of this thing. Matthew chapter 9. We're in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 3. And this is just to show you that the, the Jews, they weren't crazy. They're intelligent. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying. And let me show you what they say about it. We're in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 3. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 3, it says, And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. Okay? Hang a right and go to Mark chapter 2. I'm just showing you something out of the synoptics. What does that mean? See, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all similar. John's the one that's different. John was written later. John was written after the Pauline Revelation. So you can learn a lot from looking at one particular story in Matthew, Mark, Luke. Sometimes you'll even find the same story in John as well. So God's trying to give you light on this situation. See how God does things? He's not going to put everything in one place for you. Amen. If you're lazy, you know, you're not going to get it. Oh, I read all of Mark. Oh, okay, well, I guess you missed you know, Matthew, Luke, and John then. So you don't have the whole light on the story, do you? Look at Mark 2, verse 7. Same situation. It says, Why does this man speak blasphemies? And here's the statement. Who can forgive sins but God only? Okay? Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and verse 21. Luke chapter 5 and verse 21. And it says this, And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So we've talked about it. If you've been here the past few weeks, we've been talking about this. So the Jews were right. Only God can forgive sin. But there you have it. We're, we're there in the... Uh, Jesus did it. <laughs> he said, you know, by, sin, by sin to be forgiven thee. Makes you think about a confessional, is not it? The Jews had more sins. But I had a young man that was a part of a misguided cult called the Church of God uh, where his particular church taught that Jesus was not the Father. So... Um, he quoted to me Isaiah 45, 21. It says, Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. For who had declared this from ancient time? Who had told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. It tells you twice. None beside me. None beside me. And this little guy, I mean... He, he's just following what his daddy's telling him. His daddy's a pastor, you know, and uh, he had a King James Bible. He thought that was pretty interesting. We had King James Bible stuff. And, uh, but he said, Jesus can't be God. And he took me right there. And I said, Amen. Amen. And he, he's, he thought, 
he's kind of confused. Why are you saying amen? I said, turn over to Acts. We're going to turn over to Acts chapter 7. And I said, now you believe the King James Bible is the Word of God, right? And he said, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I said, okay, well good. Then we know there'd be no contradictions in this Bible. And we're in Acts chapter 7 and verse 55. Now this is when Stephen is getting stoned by the Jews. Stephen has a vision. Or is actually looking up into the, the third heaven. But there in Acts chapter 7 and verse 55, it says this. So this is when they're about ready to stone him. It says, But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God and what? Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You know what else you, word you could use for that? <laughs> Beside. Jesus standing beside God the Father. But yet we saw in Isaiah 45, there's none beside me. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. Jesus is standing beside you. But you know what, what I told that young boy? He said the Bible doesn't contradict. You told me you believe the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Your doctrine's wrong. Your doctrine's wrong. If your doctrine, I say this all the time, it's because once I heard it, I was like, man, that's so good. I didn't create it. But if your doctrine makes the Bible contradict, you need another doctrine. Amen. That's just really what it comes down to. And that boy, you know, I, I encourage him. I encourage him. I said, you know, it's, it's good you're reading your Bible, but you got to let the Bible speak. Amen. you got to let the Bible speak. Or else you're going to be just like anybody out there, you know. But, uh, so, the Jews pointed out the implication. God called His own Son God. Now, Jesus confirmed the, the claim of God and His own accusers. See, the fact is, in His three and a half years of ministry, we've went over it, numerous people come up to Him and worship Him. And He's never like, oh, no, no, get up, get up, you know, don't worship Him. Worship, worship only God. No, he's letting these people worship him. You know, he, he's letting them uh, break open their, their uh, ointment and pour it on them like one year's wage. You understand that? I mean, if he wasn't God, man, that was a sin. Man. That was blasphemy right there. I mean, but not just once. I mean, repeatedly. Repeatedly. So, he never refused it. So we're back in John chapter 5. I want to show you what this chapter has to say about this, that Jesus was equal to God in actions. We're in John 5, 19. And it says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So he says, Whatever I do, is the same as God doing it. God the Father. Well, also in John 5, we learn not only that Jesus was equal in actions, but that He was equal in access. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus claimed to have the same access as God. That's pretty extreme. I mean, that, that means that you could just breathe and create. You understand that? That's what God did. So uh, we'll look at John 5, 21. And it says, For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Isn't that something? God gives life. I do too. And he proved it in his ministry. More than a few times. Um, raising people from the dead. See, this is something that Jesus not only accomplished in his life, but he did it. I'll just name a couple. Like, you remember his buddy Lazarus? Four days dead. Four days. This isn't the guy was dead on the table for 30 minutes, and somehow, you know, we massaged his heart, and now he's back. Four days. Um, or Jairus' daughter. Remember, that's when Jesus walks in. He's like, she sleepeth, and everyone laughs into scorn. He comes walking out with her. Amen. But Jesus even did this with his own life. That's the one that can't be duplicated. 
With over 500 eyewitnesses and secular historians, they never even kicked it. This has been